Hey what's up you guys, today we are doing a tag video because my creative juices are done and gone, I don't have any, my brain is empty, so we are doing a tag, I haven't done a tag video in a while, so I'm kind of excited, kind of, you know, kind of chill. I was tagged to do the Classics Book Tag by Julie Autumn Book, I will leave her channel in the description, please go check her out, she's super nice and I enjoy her videos, so I'm just going to get straight into the questions, if you enjoyed this video please leave a like, please subscribe and Let's just get started. Question number one is, what is an overhyped classic that you were not a fan of? And I have chose Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen and in general, just Jane Austen overall. I just could not get into Pride and Prejudice. I finished it, but I gave it three stars. I thought it was kind of boring, to be honest. It's just completely about marriage. The only topic of conversation is marriage. All the people do is think about marriage. It's just sisters wanting to get married and I just wasn't for it. I just thought it was kind of boring to be honest. And then I also read Persuasion and I just didn't care about that either. I can't even remember what it was about to be honest. It was again just about marriage. <laughs> like I feel like Jane Austen just writes about women getting married and I don't care for it. Sorry. Question number two is your favourite time period to read about. And I am not someone that really knows a lot about history because, well, okay, that's a lie. I do, but like only specific things. More like American history, actually, than English history. I don't care about England or English history. So when I was thinking of this, I was like, okay, what do I really like? And I've narrowed it down to the Victorian era, but more like, you know, the Victorian era in books, not the actual Victorian era. So I was thinking of like Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. I was thinking of like, what is the like really atmospheric books that really take you back in time? And the ones that came to mind for me were Great Expectations, Wuthering Heights, Jane Eyre. I don't want to talk about Jane Eyre in this video because I always talk about it. But you know, just like take you back to those days and like the people and what I really like about it is like just the way they think. They think about everything in some ways more simply, but in other ways they make things more complicated for themselves. You know, like marriage and stuff, although I just said I didn't care about marriage and Jane Austen's books. When it does come up, it's much more simple. It's like basically kind of like arranged and although I guess that's kind of bad like it's nice to read about because it's just so simple and things are like just life seems so much easier even though for the poorer people they weren't. That's another thing I find really interesting is class in these books so you know you have like the super rich people and then you have like the poor and then you have like the help and I really enjoy in books when there's like maids and servants and cooks and stuff like that and they get involved in the drama like in Wuthering Heights I love um, like Nelly, who is basically like, I think she's just a maid type person. She's right in there like with a wooden spoon, like stirring the pot. And I just really enjoy that whole thing, you know, with the, the really rich people in their houses and the atmosphere and the help or getting involved and just stuff like that. I really enjoy it. So question number three is what is your favorite fairy tale? And I actually haven't read any fairy tales, you know, like properly read them since I was a child, but I was thinking of like Disney movies and the one that came to mind for me is Chicken Little. Get the sky Something really big is going down. So if you don't know, Chicken Little is about a little chicken called Chicken Little and he is walking along one day and an acorn falls on his head and he thinks the sky is falling. So then he goes around and tells the entire town the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And in the Disney movie, aliens then show up, but in the actual fairy tale, it's basically just an acorn. And I think the moral of the story is like, I don't know. I don't know what the moral is. I guess to like not believe everything you hear or like to look at proof of things. I don't know what the, I don't know what the moral of the story is. Um, but I just think it's kind of fun. All the animals are called like Foxy Loxy, Lucy Goosey, Chicken Little doesn't rhyme. But I guess it does if you do an accent. All the animals just have fun names anyway. <laughs> so, you know, I have to stand Chicken Little. That Disney movie as well is so underrated. I love it. Oh, turkey Lurkey. Hurry! Oh, look! A penny. Guys! Oh, right. Question number four is what classic are you embarrassed you haven't read yet? And for me, I have went for Rebecca by Daphne de Maurier. This is about a woman who marries a older, richer, widower man and moves into his house and when she's there she finds out that 
him and the house are haunted by his dead wife, Rebecca. And everyone only has good things to say about this. It sounds really fun. Like, just the premise sounds really exciting. And I don't know much else about it, but I just know that I really want to get to it. And I don't know why I haven't, to be honest. I don't know why I have left it this long without getting into it, because it sounds really good. Top five classic... Oh, this is quite an, uh, question five. Top five classics you would like to read soon. So I done a Goodreads owned TBR shelf last night and I realised that I own like five or six Charles Dickens books I haven't read so I definitely want to get to them. I also want to get to The Mill on a Floss by George Eliot. I haven't read anything by her yet but she's just another like you know classic author that I feel like everyone needs to read and I really want to get into some of her stuff. I also have The Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall. I talked about this in my haul video. <laughs> I was like haul haul. Um, video that I uploaded like last week and this was like um, one of the earliest lesbian novels and I just think LGBT issues in classics is something I haven't really read about yet so that would be kind of interesting to see. This book was banned when it came out because it was about lesbians and it was like a big deal back then and I think it'll be really fun. Someone actually wants to buddy read it with me so hopefully I get to it in August next month because it sounds really cool. I also want to read Dracula by Bram Stoker. I have owned this since last April. I definitely need to get to it soon. This October, 100%, I am reading Dracula. And then finally, Shirley by Charlotte Bronte. I talk about it all the time. It's the last Bronte book I have left to read and I will be reading it this month. And then I'm done with all the Bronte books, which is very bittersweet. Okay, question number six is your favourite modern book slash series based on a classic. And I don't really know what this means. I think it means like retellings. I haven't read any retellings, so I'm going to have to skip it. I do want to read... Cinder and those books by Marissa Meyer so pretend I've read them and enjoyed them and maybe put them in here if you really need an answer but yeah I don't know. Number seven your favourite movie version or TV series based on a classic and without a doubt Clovis. Bobber all over you. Ew get off of me. Ugh as if. Clovis is one of the best movies of all time it is my absolute favourite. I have watched it so many times. I mean, this outfit is like clueless colours. Like, it's just so iconic. It is the epitome of the 90s and I love it. I love every second. I could probably quote the entire script to you. It is based on Emma by Jane Austen and it's just a very, very loose retelling of that, but like modernised. And it's so funny. Alicia Silverstone is just iconic. Everything about that movie is iconic and it's just so good. I have watched it so many times. Also, The Invisible Man that came out this year um, is based on a book by H.G. Wells and that movie was so good as well. He said that wherever I went, he would find me, walk right up to me, and I wouldn't be able to see him. The 2020 version doesn't really have anything in common with the actual original book because the original book came out in like the 1880s or something like that and this is a very modern retelling so basically the only thing it has similar is the fact that it is called the invisible man and it has an invisible man in it but this version was so good you need to watch it it is about an, a girl who escapes or a woman i should say from an abusive relationship and her boyfriend is like a mega rich tech guru and he has invented a invisible suit and he uses it to fake his own death and then make everyone think that she's going crazy and to make her think that she's going crazy she he like gaslights her and it is incredible. It is such a good depiction of an abusive relationship. It is just so good. The actress in it, I can't remember her name right now, but she does such a good job of just playing this woman who is like at her wit's end and please go watch it. It is so good. You will not regret it. Question number eight is what is the worst classic to movie adaptation? And I couldn't really think of one for this because I haven't seen that many, but the one I did think of is Alice Through the Looking Glass, which came out in 2016, and it was a sequel to the 2010 live action Alice in Wonderland by Disney. In the tea time. Tea time forever! Hello, Alice. This 2016 sequel doesn't actually have anything really in common with the Alice Through the Looking Glass book. It basically just used its name and it just wasn't very exciting. The cast were kind of over it. You could just tell, you know, when you watch a movie and you're like, everyone is only given like half a performance here. Like Johnny Depp is in it and Helena Bonham Carter and the girl that plays Alice is like Mia Waz, I don't know her name. But like everyone's just like 
not into it and this script was kind of poor and it has this stupid time villain and overall it just wasn't the best it's not like that bad like i don't regret watching it i've only seen it once and i didn't regret watching it but you know it wasn't that good hold on everyone i got one hold on question number nine is book that you want to collect different editions for i think i'm confused by the wording of this question and i don't really collect more than one edition of books to be honest but if i was going to it would probably be for wuthering heights by emily bronte you get some really nice you know like classic classic um, editions that are like patterned and like, just really fancy looking and then you get ones that have illustrations that play up like the atmosphere and the mirrors and the house and then you get ones that play on the romance angle and you just get a lot of different editions of this that I've seen and they're all super nice and it's just one of those books that is really up for interpretation and you can tell that from the different covers like I don't know I just think there's a lot of different editions out there of this and if I was going to collect more than one edition of books it would probably be for Wuthering Heights. Question number 10 is an underhyped classic you'd recommend to everyone and I'm going to say Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. This book is so good. So it is about a mentally disabled man who I think he has autism. It's never really specifically stated and I don't know if that's just because of the time period or if the author wanted to leave up for interpretation but he is for all intents and purposes an autistic man who goes to experiments that increase his IQ and it is written in diary form so it starts off with him writing very simple like can barely put sentences together and then as he gets smarter and smarter he basically is writing like master thesis like proper really like <laughs> I don't know how to describe it like really intelligent pieces of work but then the experiments you know start to fade off and he is slowly like deteriorating back to his original state and it is just so heartbreaking to see him kind of realize that his life isn't what he thought it was because he had like a very simple naive outlook on life because of I would say his autism and you realize or he realizes sorry that his friends aren't really his friends they're like making fun of him behind his back and he starts going on a date with a woman and at first she kind of likes him because he's a little simple because it's not right the very start he meets her but then he runs too intelligent and she is like turned off by it and it's just like so heartbreaking to watch like him learn all this stuff and then also like slowly deteriorate again and it's such a really good portrayal of just like learning disabilities and things like that and it's so heartbreaking it will honestly just tug on your heartstrings it's so sad but everyone needs to read it it's really really good and i don't hear anyone talk about it that often but it's so good and i wish everyone would read it and that was the classics book tag i am not going to tag anyone but if you want to do it then <laughs> that's me tagging you um you're tagged now so you have to do it or else i will come and delete your channel Can on don't do it if you don't want to do it but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, please subscribe, more videos. I actually have got a schedule now. I've never fully, I've never said it out loud in case I decide not to do it anymore, but I did basically upload every single Wednesday and Sunday. So please hit that subscribe button and I will see you in my next video.